my night goblins, uh, which are you can't really see in because the, uh, they're behind the building, uh, tried to charge his great unclean one. Um, I figured to hold it up, and you know probably to win combat if I challenged out my champion. But I failed, so uh, they moved forward three inches and sat there. You, to be fair, you did need like you need a pretty I need pretty an eight. High it was an eight. eight or a nine. Yeah. It was an eight. Yeah. So it was a little bit above average, but I figured it was worth the risk, and I yeah. didn't lose anything by doing it. Um, yeah, you lost a couple inches of movement, no big deal. Yeah, and then my giant charged his uh, nerglings, which you might think is a terrible idea, but in reality, it didn't actually play out that poorly for me. Although I guess I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Um, <laughs> That giant needed to find a way to get in contact with, with the Grand my Queen great and clean one. Yeah. I, I feel like abandoning that flank with the giant and, mo and taking your 12-inch march behind the building and away from the action might have been the better choice. Take him towards that central fight and try to get the Nurgans out of the fight. Because the Nurgans would have had a you know, a rough go of things if they tried to go through that area of fanatics. You know what I was thinking was... um. I'm used to playing Empire, where my war machines are at least 100 points, generally. And I had a war machine in that building, and I was just like, I don't want to lose that war machine. Yeah, 40 points. But then I was like, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know why I thought about it. I was like, that unit's 40 points, and it's completely pretty much useless in the new edition. So, you're right, I should have went behind the building. Well, yeah. here you're playing Orcs and Goblins, like I think they were intended to be played, which is a push them forward army. But... The way the book's written, I think it performs a lot better as the a KG. KG. Yeah, very KG yeah. army, especially in 7th. In 7th, the last thing I wanted to do was get in close combat. That was what needed to happen in the final couple turns. The rest of the game, I just tried to weaken the enemy and look for a weak spot. Right now, uh, I'm feeling like orcs are still going to be very powerful, doing the same exact thing as they used to do. Is it, Avoiding combats that you're going to try to win on the first turn and what you're doing is throwing forward you instead of hold up the enemy and then looking for big flank charges and big, huge combat phases with the help of the law spell. They got the shooting to do it, too. So. Yeah, the shooting's nasty. The rock club is great. Yeah, it's cheap. I, um, I think Matt's right, and I also think the wog spell um, is insane trying to get flank charges off. It, uh, we didn't have the wog spell in this game, but I think the wog makes orcs... Uh, Extremely powerful if you are able to get it off. Very. Yeah. Yeah, I, I played the Orcs uh, for my first four games of eight. That's and me. Rolled uh, three of them against Alex and against another opponent. Rolled over them, basically playing a losing game for three turns and then get it off the wall, irresistible, and that's game over. So I go all the strikes it first. It's, it's every unit in the Orc army moves for D6, two, two D6 to six, six inches. Towards the nearest enemy, including fanatics, including giants, everything, and your war machines. War machines. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it says in the description of the spell, and I can't believe they didn't address this in FAQ. It says in the description of the spell, the war machine crew abandons their machine. In 8th edition rules, I guess that would mean the machine's destroyed. But we decided to play that they take the machine with them and move 2d6. Because 8th edition rules don't allow you to leave your machine, whereas in 7th edition you could. No, and I've heard online uh, from the Warhammer form. I think that's a lot. That's the way a lot of people are interpreting that is that the machine. Take the machine moves. with it. Yeah, it makes Cause sense because the they're wound marks. The crew don't exist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all right, back to the game. Um, so uh, a great um, a resounding victory for my for the orcs. The rock lobber <laughs> hurdles a rock and lands it square on top of the um, great and clean one, doing three wounds, which I was extremely happy about because. Uh, that thing has seven wounds left, but <laughs> <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. You gotta have to, you know, doing three in one shot is, you know, is good. So I was happy. I have his spell out there next to him. I don't know why I bothered. I knew there was no chance he was ever gonna try to cast any spells this whole game. Well, during the magic phase, uh, his magic phase, I poofed out another Nurgling. Uh, yeah. So all my bases again made it so that I had a full rank of five guys, which meant if he wasn't able to erase a, <coughs> an entire base, I was going to be steadfast at the end of the turn. Yeah, and I attempted to cast um, Mork Wants You on his Great and Clean one, and at the time we were playing it with, again with Initiative 2, so it would have been like, oh, take D6 wounds basically. Um, but I, he spell scrolled it. Yeah, I scrolled it. Yeah, so. yeah, I skipped over that part. So. Oh, wait, I didn't skip over it. No big yeah. deal. There you go in there. Yeah. Okay. So that's close combat. 
Um, so the combat phase, um, my wyvern charged into the great uh, the plague bearers and did four wounds. It looks like, which I was very disappointed with. Um, I figured, it's, I mean, it's a black orc boss on a giant dragon thing. It would do more than that. <laughs> Giant dragon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it no, looks like a dragon, so I thought it would act like a dragon, and it didn't. I was disappointed. It really only has seven attacks, though, the whole... The whole model. I mean, yeah, it, plus a D6 thunderstorm. Stomp. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, it has a thunder stomp, so I was hoping for more than that. He didn't do any wounds back, which is good. Um, and I believe he lost combat, but rolled under his leadership. I'm steadfast here because I have one rank of five models. Compared to my nine. So I have, yeah, I have more than you have, so I'm... Yeah, during the shooting phase, uh, I we're looking at this, we're reminded one wound went on in my fiend from a uh, night goblin bow action. It was pretty demoralizing for me. Also in the close combat phase, we fought the blood letters against the orcs, and that was very uneventful for the orcs, but I was able to killing blow both of his heroes, and... It felt kind of bad because that was a huge swing in the game. Neither one of them got to do any wounds before they died. And it, it just ensured that the Biggin unit was not going to be there for much longer. I actually um, managed, uh, although I'm initiative two, I did you know my attacks back and only managed to kill two models. <laughs> Even though I was strength five, um, you got a lot of attacks. So I was pretty disappointed. But I, I held with my 18-inch... Uh, large target leadership on my general. Which is, yeah, that's pretty huge. It's really good. Um, I can see Empire armies running um, War Altars now have a giant Leadership 9 bubble of a 36 inch uh, diameter circle. It's huge. Or uh, a griffin. maybe even a general on a griffin is a griffin. I don't know about a griffin. Well, well, uh, Carl Franz. Me and, yeah. me and Dylan are a little bit more fluff players, and the griffin has become more viable now that A has Thunderstop and B has an, a 36 inch diameter leadership I'll bubble. I'll follow you on more viable. That's yeah. About where I'd I don't stop. think it's powerful, but. Yeah. yeah. In the combat between the Nerglings and the um, giant, uh, the Nerglings attacked, did two poison wounds on the giant. The giant swung with club and uh, did his thunder stomp and uh, did two wounds back plus his charge. So he won by one. During my turn I had two obvious charges. I had one to send my horrors into the flank of his wyvern and try to just beat him on straight combat res. And I wanted to send my big pop of poop into the night goblins to get myself around 325 points which I felt like I could do in one round for the rest of the movement phase I did very little I moved my fiends towards the rock lava and then I was done movement because everything else is engaged in close combat during the second turn's magic phase I actually had a pretty good phase I pooped out another base of nerglings and I was able to irresistibly get uh, gift of chaos off which God, I can't believe I'm using the names of spells. I'd rather call it bubble spells. I get, off, I get off the bubble spell irresistibly. This time I lose six nerglings, which will bring me down below my level three, which kind of bumped about. But I was able to do three wounds on the wyvern with it with some really good rolling, and it killed a handful of goblins. During the combat with the wyvern, I didn't get particularly lucky. I just got... Uh, a little bit smart, I guess. I declared a challenge against his uh, Wyvern Rider, which he couldn't deny. I've got a four up ward, and this is with my champion, of course. I have a four up ward, I have a flank, and I have three ranks and a standard. And there's essentially, there's very little chance of you winning this unless. No, I, I don't see a chance of you winning this. So, the reason why Matt did this is because my orc and my wyvern attack at two different initiative values. The orc killed the champion no problem, but then the wyvern w lost all of his attacks and his thunder stomp. So I basically couldn't make up five wounds for combat res. I basically, I think I did one wound. Um, so I, as you can see, I fled, um, and he didn't pursue me, or he didn't catch me. He did pursue, but he didn't catch. Yeah, so I lost one model couple wounds and I was able to run off a wyvern with Brider. Unfortunately I wasn't able to run him down. <coughs> In the combat with the orcs I did more wounds but he had I fled. You did? Mm -hmm. 
In the combat with the orcs, it continued the same as it did last turn. I was able to do more wounds and win the combat. And this time, I was able to break him and rolled one inch less than him on the pursue, which I wasn't complaining about, certainly, because big ones are actually kind of a challenge, I to say, for blood letters. Points-wise, though, big ones are certainly, you're, you're paying more points. You're, you're paying a lot of points for not getting a whole lot of action. Um, I, at this point, I re was really wishing that I had taken two hand weapons on the big guns because... Um, Higher strength? Or? Although the back ranks don't get two attacks, um, the six plus parry save really doesn't do that much compared to having an extra attack per model. I don't know. I feel like you were, you were probably saving one guy a turn with that. But do I you think you would have done one extra wound per turn? Oh, I would have had five more attacks at yeah. five more attacks at strength five. I yeah, think okay. I could have done more. In the fight with the Great and Cleveland, Alex declared a challenge, which was definitely the right decision, because that made it so that my Great and Cleveland had very little chance to get off his stomp ability, and therefore had very little chance of winning the combat. I had at maximum I could do uh, four wounds, and those four wounds. We're not going to win me the combat because he had a musician. I think I did one or two wounds and lost the combat, something like that. Yeah, it was interesting because Max, uh, Matt was actually hoping to do uh, no wounds with his four attacks so that he could get a stomp attack. Or yeah, I was, I was yeah. hoping to do no wounds with my initial attack and then roll my stomp while your challenge, you know, while your challenger's still alive. I'd roll my stomp and roll a five or a six. And then I'd actually manage to win the combat, which I couldn't do with the Great Unclean One's four attacks. So the Great Unclean One lost the combat but took no wounds, as is always the case with demons, it <laughs> seems. In the fight with the giant in the Nurglings, it's more of the same. I did two wounds with uh, poison, which is just on, I think that's actually just on average. I'm doing about ten attacks. It's a little bit better than average. Yeah, I actually did five wounds back in this combat. Um... The Nurglings lost by three, which was, you know, it was interesting because Matt had uh, put the Nurglings um, lined up with my giant, and a lot of the combats we were fighting, I was actually winning by at least one. And, uh, of course, with Lucia of Nine, he didn't take any wounds. <laughs> so, it didn't pay off, but it could have. He could have rolled a 12 and taken a bunch of wounds. Okay, so uh, um, in my turn, two... Um, I rolled for animosity, and the only thing I had was my fast cab move forward six inches, which was actually a big deal because that allowed me to get into charge range with his plague bears. <coughs> so um, I declared two charges. Um, my spider riders charged his plague bears, and my night goblins charged his horrorlings. So my general rallied, and Matt was trying to tell me that I couldn't reform because I was within an inch of my own units. And we ended up having me reform, um, so I was facing the opposite direction, and that's just an interesting rules question. Is to, be to be fair, I wasn't trying to tell you you couldn't do it. I was, it was kind of a rules ambiguity. It says you can't move willingly within an inch of another unit. So when you rally, you get a free reform. A reform is a move. If you are within an inch of another unit, a uh, friend or foe, I guess. Do you disappear? <laughs> well, I don't think you disappear. I yeah. just think that you might not be able to make that reform because it says you can't move while you're within an inch of uh, an, another unit. But is a free move kind of a move? Ah, uh, good point. And also, free reform. If you can't move within an inch of another unit, does that mean you can't move once you become within an inch of that unit unless you charge? Does that mean both those units are stuck? Ah, uh, that's a good point because as well. Raw, that's the way it reads. Does it read that way? Well, I mean... Have you looked? No, I haven't, but... Okay, so we shouldn't quote that. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. we'll look it up for next yeah. episode. We don't mind people correcting us either. So. Yeah. Except we only have, we only have time... Minds. Yeah. We only have time for painting, drinking, and playing. We, we don't read this rule book. Um, my big guns rallied, which was awesome. Uh, they reformed to take the charge from the blood letters. And that was it for my movement, my magic phase. I mean, my movement phase. Yeah, neither one of us has a lot of units that aren't in close combat, and that's a lot of just playing what the scenario dictated with the deployment. And again, that's something I feel like you almost would have been better served uh, deploying on the line with all your stuff and castling with your ranged machines. I mean...